I have a Nissan Altima 2006 here and the AC stopped working on this car and the dealer where the shop was asking for a thousand dollars to have the AC compressor replaced and now today I'm gonna show you how to fix that with only hundred fifty dollars and the steps is actually uh, similar to other cars as well what you're looking at here is an AC compressor and that thing in front of it is the clutch or clutch assembly which makes the compressor run and the clutch is usually the first one that goes uh, that goes bad before the uh, actual compressor itself I'm not gonna go through all the troubleshooting steps since this instruction is for clutch replacement but first troubleshoot your car and make sure that nothing else is wrong before buying a new clutch I assume that you already check your AC system and it's fully charged. There's no leak, the fuse are okay, the relay is working and the wires are good. In my case, all of these are working properly except for the compressor. This is the clutch that I bought for $120. This is the connector for the coil. It only has one pin in there that gets supplied with 12 volts. It, uh, the clutch composed of three components. The hub uh, that's attached to your compressor's motor shaft. The hub spins together with your compressor's motor. This pulley which has the bearing, this pulley spins independently of the coil and the hub. The serpentine belt goes around this pulley. And then the coil. This is where the uh, this is powered by 12 volt DC voltage and generates a magnetic field around it. What it does is once the coil is gets energized, it attracts the hub to stick onto the spinning pulley, and that will make your compressor compressor spin since the hub is attached to the compressor shaft. This is the clutch holding tool. I'll show you how this works later. This is not required, but if uh, but it will save you a lot of time. Uh, this will hold the hub from spinning when you're removing the bolt. If you don't have this tool, you may have to find a way to stop the hub from spinning uh, when you're removing the bolt. It holds, uh, holds it. It will actually grab onto these edges while you're uh, uh, removing the bolt so it doesn't spin together with it. So let's head to the car. If you look down uh, the engine at uh, the passenger side, you'll see the compressor down there and you'll see the clutch and also the connector that we're now going to remove so to demonstrate this I'm going to test my new coil the frame of the coil should be attached to the ground or to the car's chassis then I'll plug the coil to the connector and start the car and with full AC on the AC system will turn on the compressor this will energize the coil and generates a magnetic field and if it attracts any metal around it that means that the coil is working I'll be removing the the passenger wheel so we can gain access to the compressor and I'm using a breaker bar to loosen up all the bolts then I'll be jacking up the car and finish it off with an impact wrench to remove all the bolts and take the, the wheel out and make sure you have a proper jack stand and you should not work underneath uh, the car without jack stand uh, supporting the car okay what you see here is the compressor and that's uh, actually the clutch and this is the bolt we're actually gonna remove as you can see here the hub, the hub will spin together with the bolt and this is where the holding tool comes in and it will stop the hub from spinning together with the bolt while we unscrew it so once the bolt is loosened you can just unscrew it with your hand I should have done this first but th this is easy to do. This, just right above the compressor you'll see the auto tensioner where the belt is looped around. To loosen up the belt we need a 14mm wrench and rotate the tensioner clockwise. 
then pull the belt out of it. And then continue on to remove the hub. The pulley is now exposed and you'll see that it is being held by a C-clip with two holes at the end of it. To remove the C-clip, we will be using a C-clip plier. Okay, one thing to remember, the hub that we just removed uses some spacers that looks like washers. These spacers create a gap between the pulley and the hub. My new clutch came with the spacers, but I'll just be using these spacers instead. Okay, it's time to remove the C-clip. And there we have it. Okay, we have to use some elbow grease to remove the, this pulley. There's a special tool to remove the pulley. It's called jaw pulley puller, but I don't have that. I'll just be using a pry bar or a crowbar, and I'm just going to slowly tap it with a hammer. Once the pulley is removed, the coil will now be exposed. The coil is being held by three Phillips screws. And all we have to do is unscrew all of those. And we should be able to take the coil out. Okay, it's time to install the new pulley. My new clutch actually came with some hardware, uh, screws, spacers, and uh, the C-clip or the snap ring. Make sure the uh, surface of the compressor is already clean before putting the coil on. Uh, secure the coil with the three screws that came with it. And you can uh, easily tell how the rest of the clutch is installed since you already saw how the old one was removed. Now, uh, the pulley doesn't go in easily by hand, so we need to gently tap it with a piece of wood to avoid damage to it until we see the groove on the compressor's nose where we can clip the snap ring or the C-clip. Now before installing the hub, make sure that we put back all the shims or the shims, the number of shims that we took out uh, from last time. Uh, these shims will create a gap between the pulley and the hub. Secure the hub with a bolt and using the hub tool holder. Once the hub has been installed, we need to make sure that the gap between the hub and the pulley is within specification. This ensures that the hub is not rubbing against the pulley when it's not engaged. Here I'm using a filler gauge to measure the gap. For the manufacturer specification, the gap should be between 1,000 or sorry, 10,000 of an inch to 20,000 of an inch. You may have to add or remove shims or, or spacers in order to get this into specification. Here, as you see, my gap is 0 0.16 or 16 thousandths of an inch. 
which is within specification. Now secure the serpentine belt onto the pulley and onto the tensioner. Plug the coil to the harness plug and turn your car AC into full. The compressor should kick in and you should be able to feel the cold air coming out of your AC vents. Now you will see here that the clutch is now engaging on and off. Once you have this working, you can now put everything back in reverse order. And that's it. That's how you replace an AC clutch assembly and save a thousand dollars. I hope you like my video. Hit subscribe so you'll get uh, notified when I upload new videos. And I will see you next time.